course three, lesson 22 and 23. We are going to be looking at multiplying and dividing fractions and multiplying and dividing mixed fractions, which is basically the same thing. So let's first um, look at this idea right here, one-half times three-fourths. Well, when we are doing problems like this, just remember when we're multiplying fractions, don't need common denominators. We just need to multiply the numerators together, so 1 times 3, and multiply the denominators 2 times 4, so that we get 3 over 8. And then we always check to make sure that our answer is in simplest form, which it is. Let's try another one. 5 sevenths times 4 sixths. Well, Let's go ahead and multiply 5 times 4 and 7 times 6 so that I have 20 over 42. And we look and we say, is this in simplest form? No, it's not because we can divide each of these by 2 and get 10 over 21. That would be my final answer. And you might be saying to yourself, well, couldn't we do that beforehand with the 4, 6? And yes, we can. We can simplify it to 2 thirds so that we multiply 5 and 2, getting us 10, and 7 and 3, which is 21. So you can reduce before and multiply, or reduce or multiply first and then reduce. It doesn't matter. Either way will work. So um, to show you this again, we have 7 times 8 and 8 times 9, so that we get 56 over 72. And you can say, well, those are each divisible by 8. So we get 7 over 9, which when we look, we say, okay, 7 eighths can't be reduced, 8 ninths can't be reduced, but since we're multiplying fractions, we can cross simplify and say 8 into 8, that's 1, 8 into 8 is 1. And we just get 7 times 1, 7 times, or 1 times 9 is 7 ninths. Okay, so whether we, you reduce before or reduce after, it'll work. Now, what if we had things in um, word form like this? Three-fourths of eight-ninths. Well, you might know that of means multiplication, so we need to do three-fourths times eight-ninths. And we can simplify here first. I always like to simplify first. And we get one and three. We can get one and two, which means we do one times two is two. One times three is three. We can do the same thing for two-thirds times three-fourths. And we simplify to get one-half. Now if you just wanted to multiply the two times three is six, three times four is twelve, that reduces to one-half. Okay, so regardless, it reduces down just nicely. Now when we are dividing fractions, we need to use this idea of a reciprocal. Two-fifths and five-halves are reciprocals. Basically, we are taking two-fifths and switching my numerator and denominator. And every time I do that with two-fifths and five-halves, when I multiply together a number and it's reciprocal, I will always, always get one. Okay? Which is really nice. Really, really nice. Now, when we are dividing fractions, we have three steps. Number one, we keep the first fraction. So if we are taking two-thirds divided by one-fourth, we are going to keep my two-thirds. Second, I'm going to change the symbol. So this division sign becomes a multiplication. And third, we will flip the second fraction. So we have two-thirds times four over one. And we can say, we just have to multiply now. So we do two times four, which is eight, three times one, which is three. So let's practice this keep, change, flip, or you might have heard it copy, dot, flip. I always say it copy, dot, flip, but it doesn't actually matter. So practicing with 3 eighths divided by 1 fourth, okay, we are going to say I'm going to keep 3 eighths and then switch the sign to be multiplication and then flip to be one, 4 over 1. So we can reduce and say, all right, 4 is 1 now and 8 is 2, so 3 times 1 is 3 and 2 times 1 is 2, so we get 3 over 2. And we can keep it as an improper fraction, that is just fine in this stage in mathematics. Alright, another one, 6 sevenths divided by 5 fourteenths, so we keep 6 sevenths, we switch the sign to multiplication, and we do 14 over 5, which means we can simplify the 7 and 14 
and we multiply to get 12 over 5. All right, or you can reduce it, or you can put it in a mixed fraction and say, well, that's the same as 2 and 2 fifths. All right, 5 ninths divided by 2 thirds, we say 5 ninths times 3 halves. Okay, and we get 5 over 6. What we are truly saying with all these division problems is how many 2 thirds can we get into 5 ninths? Just like if we had a whole numbers. Let's say 5 ninths were 20 and 2 thirds were 4. How many 4s can we get in 20? Okay, how many 2 thirds can we get in 5 ninths? We would say I can get 5 sixths of 2 thirds, so almost a full 2 thirds into 5 ninths. So when we get to some word form of these dividing fractions, we need to set them up. How many 2 thirds are in 1? Well, remember, if this were 5 and this were 20, how many 5s can go into 20? We would say 20 divided by 5. Well, in this case, how many 2 thirds are in 1? So we do 1 divided by 2 thirds. So we copy the 1, and I'll just put it 1 over 1, and multiply by 3 over 2. So we would say, I can get 3 halves, or 1 and a half, 2 thirds, into 1. Okay, same with the other, this next one. How many halves are in 3 fourths? How many halves are in 3 fourths? So we do 3 fourths divided by 1 half. I copy my 3 fourths, and I multiply by 2 over 1. I can simplify, and we would see this one actually comes out to 3 halves as well. There are 1 and a half, 1 halves in 3 fourths. Now when we get to our mixed fractions, which is the next lesson, it's really just one step difference. We just need to turn our mixed numbers into improper fractions. That's really all we need to do. Okay, so we follow our rules for multiplying and dividing and we simplify. So if we have our, um, our problem down here, 3 and 1 6 times 4 and 1 8, we're going to get it into mixed fraction by multiplying and then adding. So we get 19 over 6 times 33 over 8. And we would multiply, or we can simplify and say, all right, 3 into 6 is 2, and 3 into 33 is 11. So 19 times 11 is 209 divided by 16. Okay? So really, we just need to change our mixed numbers into improper fractions. So in this case, if we have 4 and a half times 7 3 fourths, we would get 9 halves times 31 over 4. Doesn't look like we can simplify anything here, so we just need to do 9 times 31 over 2 times 4. So we get 8 on the denominator. Let's see. Um, 31 times 9 is 279. Okay. So we get 279 over 8, and that's it. All right, you can try this one out for yourself, but just turn it into an improper fraction and multiply across. Now, if we get to our uh, mixed numbers with division, same idea. We now have 2 thirds divided by 5 over 4. We put it into improper fraction, and we can do my keep 2 thirds, multiply, so switch the sign, and we have 4 fifths. So that we get 8 fifteenths as my answer. Okay, so just change it into an improper fraction. This is a pretty good um, instruction if you forget what you need to do. And let's look at some examples. So what's the area of the rectangle two and a half inches long and one and a half inches wide? Well, we need to multiply these. We need to multiply two and a half times one and a half. So we put them into improper fractions and say we have five halves times three halves. So the area is 15 over four inches squared. Okay, or you could say three and three fourths inches squared. Okay, similarly, if I have this recipe and it calls for one and three fourths cups of milk, and I want to double it, so I need to multiply by two, I put it into improper fractions, so seven over four times two over one. I can simplify, and I get seven over two cups of milk, so three and a half cups of milk. Now it gets a little bit trickier when I'm thinking about things um, that
that need a little bit of conversion before I actually work them through. So like this one, if one tile is four and five eighths inches by four and five eighths inches, and I have a floor that is five foot by five foot, how many tiles do I need? So I first need to figure out, okay, do I wanna get everything into inches or everything into feet? And looking at it, probably inches is gonna be easier. So I'm gonna change these five feet by five feet to my 60 inches by 60 inches. So I need the area of each of these parts. I need the area of the tile and I need the area of the floor. Well, to get the area of the tile, I need to do four and five eighths times four and five eighths. Well, that means that I need to do, let's see, 37 over eight times 37 over eight. And for the floor, I need to do 60 times 60. Well, that's an easy one. That's 3,600 square inches. That's how much floor I need to fill. And then I do my um, 37 times 37. So 37 times 37 is 1369. Okay, so this is 1369 divided by 64. Okay, and that's my inches squared for my tile. What this is saying is each of those tiles is 1369 over 64 inches squared. And I want to figure out how many of those fit into 3600. So I'm going to have to do 3600 over 1 divided by 1369 over 64, which means I'm going to have to copy 3600 over 1 and multiply by 64 over 1369. Now when I do that, okay, so 3600 times 64 gets me 20, uh, 230,400 and I'm going to then divide it by 1369. So when I do that I get, and this is in decimal form, but I would get 168.29, which means I am going to need 169, okay, so this comes out to just a little bit more than 168.29. So I'm going to need 169 tiles to fill the entire floor because, of course, a hardware store isn't going to sell me a part of a tile. Now let's try one more. I need 8 feet of baseboard to put around my room. If each board is 6 and 3 fourths inches, how many baseboards will I need? Well, let's convert that 8 feet, just like we did before, into inches. 8 feet into inches is 96 inches. So I need to say, how many 6 and 3 fourths goes into 96? Well, that's just 96 divided by 6 and 3 fourths. Well, we put them into improper fractions, so 96 over 1 divided by 27 over 4. And then I copy, I dot, and I flip. Okay, and when I do my multiplication and division, so 96 times 4 and then dividing it by 27, I get 14.2 repeating. Which means, are they going to give me a portion of a baseboard? No. So I need 15 baseboards to be able to cover my entire room. Well, I hope this was helpful for studying and for homework.